can't go one day without some patients asking me about peptides. It's the cutting edge thing right now. Hey doc, what actually works though? What's worth the investment? So let's do this. I'm reviewing the top six peptides that everyone's asking me about, but I'm gonna rank it from the beginning with rock solid evidence down the totem pole to more cutting edge experimental. Now listen, I lead the coaching department at our nationwide clinics and I've seen thousands of patients try these peptides. Some of these have decades of research. Others are so new that we're still collecting data. But today I'm gonna rank them by actual evidence levels. We'll start with the gold standard proven in human trials and we'll work our way down to the emerging options that early adopters are exploring. And I'm always gonna advocate for peptides regardless, lack of the robust human data. I, we need it, I get it, but it's not there yet. But you have a chance to improve your health. And our clinic works with all these different types of peptides and you deserve to know exactly where the science stands. And when I say proven, I mean human clinical trials. Promising means good animal data plus clinical observations and experimental means limited evidence, but great patient reports and anecdotal reports and some data too as well. Real quick, in case you're not sure, peptides, I want you to think of peptides like this. Each one of these little guys here are an amino acid and they fit together and they make these little peptide bonds. These little peptides are floating around your body and when they hit certain tissues, they activate certain processes. So think of them like a hormone and that'll kind of give you a good frame of reference of, of what these peptides actually are. But they do some crazy things. No, these are not the same types of peptides that you can get over the counter, collagen peptides, although those are pretty good for skin too as well. Okay, so let's start with the gold standard in anti-aging medicine. Let's start with low dose now, Traxone or LVN. Now, let me be clear, this is not even a peptide. It's a medication, but it's used in micro doses. So it has very little downside with tons of upside. It's often used in this space, anti-aging, holistic, preventative medicine, alongside with peptides. But I had to include it because it has better evidence than all other peptides. At tiny doses, 1.5 to 4.5 milligrams, it temporarily blocks your pain receptors. Your body responds by producing more pain relieving compounds, but these compounds, it's not about pain. Instead, it provides a powerful, natural anti-inflammatory response. Understand that these doses are fractions of what the FDA approved doses are. So again, very safe. What makes it proven is we have actual human trials for multiple sclerosis, Crohn's disease, fibromyalgia, chronic pain, published peer reviewed legitimate studies, not mouse data, not theories, real human research. Now for weight loss, in our practice, we see patients with chronic inflammation often start losing weight when we add LDN. It's like the super secret hack to GLP-1 medication induced weight loss, better gut health, improved sleep, stabilized mood, all factors that can support weight loss. The anti-inflammatory effect seems to be the key here. Also has this powerful component to modulate the immune system. So if you have autoimmune disease, you have erratic immune system function. Your immune system's going haywire, targeting tissue for destruction. And so modulation means it calms it down. This is big because that overactive immune system is what's causing the excess levels of inflammation to begin with. One of our patients, David, had chronic inflammation, couldn't lose weight for years. We added LDN, no diet change, dropped 15 pounds in just 10 weeks, just from reducing inflammation. And in our clinic, patients who combine LDN with other protocols, the carnivore diet or some other peptides that we're going to talk about, see amplified results. Start with 1.5 milligrams around bedtime, increase slowly. Vivid dreams are a common side effect initially but they're common and they'll settle down over time. This is such a crucial piece to not only the autoimmune patients, but really any inflammatory condition, non-autoimmune based like post-COVID or PCOS. Verdict proven, the gold standard. If you have any inflammatory issues, start here. Best evidence, minimal side effects. That's what proven looks like. Peptide number two, BPC-157, the tissue healer. Now we're dropping down a level to promising, but honestly, many of these might as well still be proven. We have thousands of real patient experiences in our clinic also if you didn't realize this, this is a weird space right now where despite human published research on peptides, millions of people are using these peptides to improve their health. Strange? Mm, maybe. Dangerous? I have yet to see one, and I mean one case, of somebody getting hurt by peptides or even seriously harmed. Maybe, just maybe, people are tired of having pharmaceutical pills shoved down their throats that have real downsides. But let me know in the comments, what do you think? What is the real reason that despite human research, people are reaching to peptides? now, like these guys right here, before they reach for over-the-counter or prescription pills. Now, BPC-157 is a peptide that's naturally found in your stomach, protecting your gut lining. We have human trials for ulcerative colitis, but the results were never published. What we do have is strong animal data and consistent clinical observations. Like I said, this is probably the number one prescribed peptide, in my opinion, from what I've seen. For gut issues like IBS, leaky gut, unexplained digestive problems, most of our patients report improvement. Maria, one of our patients, chronic gut problems for a decade. Six weeks 
weeks of oral BPC-157, symptoms down dramatically. And in our experience, gut issues respond especially well. But for chronic body injuries, like joint aches and tendonitis, things of that nature, injections work much better than the oral form. Many patients see real benefit with injections near the injury site, especially athletes with soft tissue injuries. The animal research is compelling, consistent healing across multiple tissue types. But remember, thousands of patients worldwide use BPC-157 successfully despite human published trials. And again, I haven't seen a single case of anybody getting hurt from this stuff. Verdict promising for both applications. Gut issues tend to respond better with pills and injuries better with injections and our clinical experience. Worth trying if you have chronic issues. We track all the outcomes to build our knowledge base. By the way, if you're starting to kind of vibe with these peptides, you're tired of pharmaceutical drugs, and you don't have an answer to your weight loss and overall health problems, I'll leave a link in the description where you can book a free discovery call with my experts so we can put together a powerful peptide protocol. Remember, these are doctor prescribed and we do ship all 50 states. Peptide 3 KPV. This is an inflammation fighter, another promising option. KPV, just three amino acids. So think of it like this right here, literally. This is an example of what KPV looks like, potentially more powerful than any other peptide for inflammation. It's actually a piece of what we call alpha MSH, which is your body's, one of your body's natural anti-inflammatory cascades. The evidence, strong cell culture studies and mouse models of colitis, for example, showed reduced inflammation through certain pathways. Like I said, human trials were still waiting, but the mechanism is solid. We actually love to pair the BPC-157 and the KPV. We actually have this compounded pill with both of them in a single pill, 500 micrograms of each, to supercharge the anti-inflammatory effects because BPC and KPV work differently. Here's what makes it promising. When it works, it really works. One of our patients, Jennifer Hashimoto's and eczema, nothing helped for years. Eight weeks of BPC-KPV combo, and she had low-dose naltrexone too as well, let me be clear. Her eczema dramatically cleared. Her thyroid antibodies down significantly. First real improvement in over five years. And in our experience, patients with autoimmune conditions will also see significant benefit, especially when combined with the carnivore diet. I'll make other videos about that later. It's not fixing the root cause. You have to understand peptides don't fix the root cause, but they're the closest thing to the root cause. KPV is going to lower inflammation, but if you stop KPV and you don't make any lifestyle changes, it's going to return. It's management, not the cure. But if you have an intention to make powerful lifestyle interventions, now we're on to something. And for some patients, even just management is completely life-changing. So you got to figure out how you want to approach this. This will act like a catalyst to get the ball rolling on some real health improvement that can be sustainable with lifestyle interventions and kind of cycling on and off peptides. That's how I personally use it and that's how we promote to our patients. Verdict, promising for inflammation, especially worth trying if you have autoimmune conditions when standard approaches haven't worked. Give it eight weeks though before judging. This one takes time. The patterns that we see in our clinics are very compelling, enough so much that we offer it with careful tracking, of course. By the way, if you appreciate this evidence-based approach to peptide therapy instead of all the hype, focusing on high-quality doctor prescription peptides, hit that subscribe button right now because I'm putting out videos every single week, always with real evidence, rankings, not marketing fluff. Okay, now let's look at one more promising option. Peptide number four, TB500, the athletic recovery tool. Last in the promising category, TB500 is actually a fragment of a larger molecule called thymus and beta-4, which is naturally increased in injured tissues. The evidence is mostly in horse and mice, literally race horses with tendon issues. No human trials yet, but why is this promising? Because enough serious athletes have reported real benefits that we can't ignore. Faster recovery between workouts, reduced injury time, and better performance. One of our patients, Sarah, a marathon runner with chronic issues, reported significantly faster recovery after adding TB500. This one pairs really nicely with injectable BBC157, not oral. We talked about that earlier. We call it our Wolverine healing protocol. If you guys know X-Men, Wolverine, he's got limited healing. We all want some of that. The animal data shows consistent tissue healing effects. The mechanism makes sense, increased cell migration. So that that's why we like to stack up BPC-157. You also get angiogenesis, growth of new blood vessels, reduced inflammation. But BPC is a powerhouse at actual healing. TB-500 adds to the healing, but it helps move the cells. So to us, understanding the mechanisms, that makes sense why we're observing clinically much better results with the addition and why I call that Wolverine. I don't call injectable BPC on its own Wolverine. You might hear some people saying that out there, but I've just seen injectable BPC sometimes not work. Verdict 
promising for recovery. If standard recovery isn't cutting it and you're training hard, it's worth considering. We would monitor athletes closely and many of you who stick with it report benefits. While serious athletes will see dramatic benefits, anybody dealing with recovery issues could also benefit as well. This is not limited to just athletes. Let's switch it up here to promising. One of my personal favorites, Sloop 332, is a compound generating interest. The claimed mechanism, mitochondrial uncoupling. What the hell does that mean? It essentially makes your cells burn more calories as heat. The published evidence, it's limited, but just because there's no published research doesn't mean it doesn't work. It means we're still gathering data. So why do we offer it? Because some patients report interesting effects, cleaner fat loss, better energy, improved recovery. We're tracking everything right now to understand what's happening. So patients that we We've noticed that are just, despite everything, even with the GLP-1, a lot of inflammation, a lot of metabolic damage. So we're talking menopause cases, PCOS, some really bad autoimmune cases. Even when we address inflammation, their body just can't get into fat burning. That's where Sloop 332 comes in because not only do you increase more calories that you're burning at rest, that's why they call it exercise in a bottle, but it's helping you to mobilize more fat and that is crucial. So what's super fascinating about this peptide is its ability to mobilize fat cells. So fasting is a big piece of our lifestyle interventions. I don't know of a better intervention for fixing insulin resistance. <laughs> if you do, let me know in the comments. Therapeutic long fasting does increase cortisol. It's not always bad to increase cortisol only when in excess. Now, understand where it can be problematic are those of you with those issues that we talked about earlier. PCOS, a lot of strain on the body, a lot of stress, a lot of cortisol. And so the existing stress is already high. You put them on long fasting and then boom, it puts them overload. It's like they pass that stress threshold, but you give them sloop during their fasting windows and all of a sudden, and their body can effectively mobilize the fat stores to burn off that fat during the fast. Huh. Light bulb moment? My working theory is that it decreases the cortisol spike that would have put them over the edge that was causing issues to begin with. So can you see why we love this fat mobilizing peptide? We have seen some amazing transformations for those stubborn cases. It's experimental. I wanna be clear for early adopters, only for patients who have tried other approaches and want to explore cutting edge options. We're essentially running our own observational study here. This is for those that are comfortable being on the cutting edge of science. Peptide number six, 5-amino-1-MQ. This is the early adopter experimental. Finally, something that's emerging in the experimental category, 5-amino-1-MQ. So this peptide actually blocks the NNMT enzyme that slows metabolism with aging. The mouse data is actually intriguing. Significant increases in metabolic rate and fat reduction. Mice aren't humans, but the mechanism is compelling. The handful of cases that we've seen have helped patients break through plateaus by adding 5-amino-1-MQ, but true Truthfully, I would go with Sloop first before you think about 5-Amino. We're still evaluating the response and getting to be more comfortable with it. The mechanism is scientifically plausible though, because the NNMT does affect metabolism. And human metabolism, of course, is more complex than mouse metabolism, but that's why we're tracking it. It is also for very early adopters, people that are comfortable being ahead of the science. We track everything because we're contributing to the knowledge base here. The verdict? emerging for pioneers. Only try this if you understand that you're participating in the discovery process. We might be onto something significant here. The good news though, it's oral, no injections. The reality, you're an early adopter helping validate some promising mouse research in humans. Also understand that Sloop is oral too as well. So just want to be clear about those. Let me show you the reality of peptide evidence. Proven, we have LDN, low dose now track zone, decades of human research. The promising bucket, we have BPC-157, KPV, TB-500, and Sloop- Three, three, two. Good mechanisms, good strong animal data, and clinical observations, lots of clinical experience. Experimental, very early 5-amino-1-MQ, mouse data with early human observations. As we go down this pyramid, evidence decreases, but innovation potentially increases. Some patients need proven options. Others have exhausted proven options, and they're ready for innovation. The key is matching the right evidence level to the right patient, and that requires medical judgment and personalized assessment. Here's why we offer all evidence levels under medical supervision. First, patients deserve options. When you've tried everything conventional and you still need help, experimental options become reasonable with proper oversight. And I gotta be honest, peptides, we're not talking about pharmaceuticals. We know pharmaceuticals have major side effects and complications and should always be approached cautiously when needed, when the benefit outweighs the risk. Peptides, it's early, but most peptide experts would agree we're talking about something that is extremely safe and the upside is very high with very little downside. So we can approach them with a different 
different approach. We cannot approach them as cautiously. We should not approach them, in my opinion, as cautiously as we do pharmaceutical medicine. Understand that we track everything, blood work, symptoms, outcomes. We're contributing to evidence-based while keeping patients safe. Transparency changes everything. You know exactly what evidence supports your treatment. Informed consent means truly informed not marketing hype. That's why every consultation starts with an evidence discussion. Where's your comfort level? What have you already tried? What are your goals? What are you struggling with? By the way, where's your evidence comfort zone? What sort of peptides have you already started using? And what changes to your health have you already gained? I'm building a community here and sharing the success stories that you're having with your peptides can help save some lives. Whatever evidence level you choose, do it safely. Only pharmaceutical grade peptides from licensed compounding pharmacies, we call that 503A. Please, Oh, please, if you can help it, stay away from research chemicals or your freaking gym dealers. <laughs> If it says not for human consumption, research only, if you didn't talk to a physician, if there was no medical history intake happening, you just purchase it online like a freaking Amazon shopping experience, well, I think you can do the math there. And I get it, those companies are gonna show you, but it's got a certificate of analysis. It says it's safe and it's efficacious, it's, it's high quality. Realize that the same guys and gals, I guess, who are literally lying point blank, not for human research, when we all know damn well it's for human use, <laughs> to circumvent the legality of it and be able to sell it to you, you're gonna then believe them when they tell you it's quality peptides and it's safe. I mean, you do what you gotta do, boo, but I'm just telling you that in my experience, it's not so much that I see patients getting hurt with research peptides, but what I've noticed more often than not is you're just not getting quality stuff. And they end up coming to us and getting real results eventually. Work with somebody who will be honest about evidence while supporting your health journey. We offer free consultations where we match patients to appropriate peptides based on their goals and comfort level. I'll leave a link below in the description where you can book your free discovery call if you want that peptide assessment and a game plan of, of what you can do. And we do offer coaching services too as well. Bottom line, peptides range from rock solid proven to exciting emerging options. Low dose naltrexone should be everybody's starting point if you have inflammation issues. BPC, KPV, TB500 are promising for the right patients also with inflammation and healing issues. Sloop 332, good if you're struggling to get into it. You've got a lot of coexisting conditions. And then 5-amino, if nothing else has worked under medical supervision. Vision. Your comfort level with uncertainty should guide your choices. There's value in proven options, and there's also value in being an early adopter if you understand what that means and you've tried everything else. If you guys wanna take a deeper dive into a video that goes specifically into healing peptides and protocols, check out that video right there. We'll see you guys later.